Welcome to That's Good Sports, I am Brandon. Draft day trades were down, but draft day TV ratings were way up perna. There were 44 draft day trades in 2019, just 33 this year. I'm not surprised though that the draft ratings were the highest ever, because you know, nobody is supposed to leave the house and this was the first sports thing to happen in months on TV. Now I was impressed that the draft ran smoothly. Maybe a little surprised to see Roger Goodell look like he aged 30 years between rounds two and three without relentless booing to give him the strength he needs to survive. The only technical disasters that I noticed were the Packers every time they drafted. The good news, Packers fans, is that your team did not let a dog draft a white supremacist kicker to replace Tom Brady like the Patriots. And New England is lucky, Airbud is dead, or that would have been the next pick. And the Texans became the biggest victims of technological issues during the draft as Bill O'Brien angrily selected internal server error when they were finally on the board in the second round. Luckily, he rebounded and got file not found in runtime error in later rounds. Today, I will tell you how meaningless draft grades are, and then I will ignore my diatribe and touch on who I thought did well and who should just forfeit the 2020 season based on the draft. Oh wait, no, I do that later. Let's get it, sports. Please subscribe to this channel if you're new here. If you're old, click the notification button so you know when I make new NFL news videos. That's what I do here. I do have big dick Patreon shout outs for new patrons. And there's a lot because I'm behind. Scott, Kinder, Antonio, Day, La, O, Austin, T, Jones, Chris, Sanders, Amish, Gone, Bad, Nick, Russell, Keith, Anderson, Tatted, Griffin, Lil Baby Chihuahua Bitch Dog Gage Handjobson FKA as Mr. 10,000 IQ. Okay. Max Strahan upping to $5. Michael Pimental Poopy Pooey I Am Poopy Boy. Justin Time Yes, a real Chargers fan. Lake Brain Cloud Lock Charter Member of the Buyer Ref Foundation. Oak Diggy. Jason Blood, upping to $20. Matt Neeson, Dave Portnoy. Come on, Dave, you know I'm waiting for you to buy me in a multi-million dollar buyout. Ian and Dick Penis Man. Thank you guys so much for your donations on Patreon. Patreon.com slash That's Good Sports. That's how you keep this channel alive. And yes, patrons get an exclusive video every month. That is their reward for all $5 members. Now, I have to say this every year, predicting how well a team drafted is like predicting which fifth rounder Mike Mayock is going to take in the first. So, to help anyone feeling down about their team's draft, let me give you a few grades from 2017, because I think the three-year window is when they actually draw definitive conclusions to a team's draft, and this is what I found. Christian McCaffrey, picked by the Panthers, draft grade D+. McCaffrey, 1,000-yard rusher and receiver. So, actually, D-plus makes sense, as McCaffrey does suffer from ADD not being able to pick whether or not he's a receiver or a running back. Patrick Mahomes, Chiefs, grade C-. minus. Super Bowl MVP, of course. Deshaun Watson, Houston Texans, C+. Plus. Still a higher grade than Bill O'Brien gave DeAndre Hopkins this last season. Then the Dolphins were given an A for drafting Charles Harris. Whoever the fuck that is. Uh, Cowboys, Taco Charlton, A minus. And Taco Charlton was of course acquired by the Dolphins to tank last season. Then there's TJ Watt, outside linebacker for the Steelers, draft grade B. He's an A, but this grade is only funny when you see that the next grade was an A plus for the 49ers, who at 31 took Reuben Foster. Now I believe those were from USA Today Sports. Uh, I'm sure there are grades that match how well Mahomes, Watson, and Christian McCaffrey would fit in the NFL. Every asshole with a computer can make a draft grade. B. Grade. Made. So you can find grades to match any narrative, as there are more draft grades than actual NFL football players. 
Now, as I shit on draft grades, I do have to say I respect the guys out there who put solid player evaluations on the internet for us to consume. I love the draft network. I like Pro Football Focus. And I think guys like Matt Miller work their asses off to bring us solid information. The reason draft grades are meaningless, though, right after the draft, is because a player's success depends on a bunch of factors not within their own control. Health, coaching fit, scheme fit, how the guys around them play, organizational changes, Ryan Leafisms, or worse, being Aaron Rodgers in 2020, global pandemics, add in divisional changes like Tom Brady or Phillip Rivers switching teams, rapidly changing the threats within one's division. Sometimes even a great pick can turn out to be shit for unexplainable reasons. It's why every time right now, I see the Broncos getting all A's in their draft grades, I cringe, because it feels like I'm getting set up for disappointment. But making a guess, saying I like what say the Vikings did and getting Justin Jefferson, Jeff Gladney, nailing two positions of need and then making 13 more draft picks is a fair evaluation. Minnesota added 15 players, close to four times as many as the Saints in this draft, so the odds are the Vikings will have hit on some of those picks. And I wrote that before I learned they got more A draft grades than any other team in the league. I wrote this whole episode before I found this chart. That's how dumb I am. However, what is unforgivable is being Bill Pullian. Taran Matthew, when he was at LSU, is he worth the risk in your opinion? No, in a word. This is a guy who's a nickelback, uh, who's a return man, who has a deficiency covering man-to-man, -man, who's speed deficient. On top of that, he's proven to be irresponsible and continues, in my mind, to show some degree of irresponsibility. That makes him a poor teammate and a poor risk. I don't know why you'd want him at any price. Bill Pullian just didn't trust the weed-smoking honey badger at all. Good God, Bill. A bear. A bear is the only animal you shouldn't trust on weed, and everybody knows that. Now, we forgot about this take because Polian topped himself, saying Lamar Jackson should be a wide receiver last year, and that Chad Kelly was the best quarterback prospect in the 2017 draft. Polian started out as an NFL scout, drafted Peyton Manning, won a Super Bowl as the Colts team president, and yet his player evaluations on TV are straight garbage. Why? Well, probably because he was born during World War II. The only way that a draft grade makes sense is in terms of value. Did a team take a player in a spot earlier or later than many projected that player to go? We have no idea how these guys will play, but we can say that the Raiders were foolish to take Cleland Farrell at six because they could have had him with one of their other later picks. Same goes for Damon Arnett this year. The draft is half player evaluation and half money ball. One third dumb fucking luck and 99% hand size. Don't check my math on that. The draft is all about acquiring the greatest number of best prospects in the most efficient manner. That's the only thing worth grading at this point, in my opinion. Just give every team a B in your grades and you will look competent in about three years. Packers not included this year. The teams that I thought did well in this draft were the Broncos, which I have already covered in depth here. I also like what the 49ers, Giants, even the Jets, Cardinals, Buccaneers, Vikings, Dolphins, Ravens, and the Cowboys. I like what those teams did. I applaud the Buccaneers for keeping it simple. Get a right tackle to address the biggest need on offense, which is right tackle, which they did in taking Tristan Wirfs, the best right tackle in the draft probably. Then taking a running back in the third and a flyer on another running back in the seventh, and then throw in another receiver just for shits and giggles. Drafting though is easy when you do have a quarterback. All teams with good quarterbacks get a draft grade of a B plus. Now, the teams that perplexed me made me question whether or not we are all living in a simulation where the Packers, Packers, the Green Bay Packers, maybe the Chargers if Justin Herbert is as bad as I think he is, the Eagles, Seahawks, and Patriots. Now, I can't go into depth on all of these teams today, but I will recap all of the divisions over the next few weeks slash months. The Patriots drafted a kicker whose kicks leaned so far right he was labeled a racist the next day. It was the wrong position, but at least Bill Belichick's dog found someone with the same appreciation for the whites as Tom Brady. 
I'm kidding, of course. The kicker is covering up his controversial tattoo and said he got it prior to racism existing and militias don't always equate to racism. I get it, Patriots fans. And New England went on to sign two undrafted quarterbacks, but should have taken a quarterback in this draft. Just like the Seahawks shouldn't have reached for Jordan Brooks in the first and then only drafted one offensive lineman only to release two in DJ Fluker and Justin Britt after the draft. Now I thought the Patriots should have drafted quarterback Jalen Hurts, not the Eagles. Philly following in the Packers footsteps, who started a trend worse than making every single commercial on television about the pandemic, opted to not improve their team immediately with a player who could be on the field all the time. But then again, the Eagles only win Super Bowls with backup quarterbacks, so maybe this is an elite move. But then again, Carson Wentz and Jalen Hurts both watched backups win the big game while they were on the bench. My prediction, Carson Wentz and Jalen Hurts are both injured, and then Nate Sudfeld becomes the next Eagles Super Bowl MVP. Now the Eagles and 49ers flipped sixth round picks with Philadelphia getting wide receiver Marquise Goodwin. I like the addition of Goodwin to their roster, and I think overall Philly actually had a pretty solid draft with one perplexing selection in Jalen Hurts. If Green Bay finished the way Philly did, we wouldn't be putting the Packers into the worst draft ever category. But smartly, Andy Benolt gave the Packers a draft grade of B minus. Now, nobody knows why the fuck the Packers did what they did. It seemed pretty obvious that they should go wide receiver at some point in the first three rounds, especially for a team who hasn't done that in the last six years. I liked at Ian Kanoy NFL's tweet, Gudikin's plan, one, let's replace Aaron Rodgers who is on a four year deal, Two, let's replace Aaron Jones, who led the NFL in touchdowns. The Packers, with their first two picks, added depth to their two strongest position groups. And even more bizarrely, not with best player available picks. And with their third round pick, with one of the deepest wide receiver classes still offering plenty of help for Aaron Rodgers, the Packers took Josiah DeGuerra, who they intend on turning into an H-back. I better give Packers fans their preparation H back. No doubt the stress is going to give them hemorrhoids. Aaron Rodgers was probably watching Drew Locke from afar in the same way he watches his family Christmas, in complete jealousy and disgust. Now John Lynch has turned into an elite GM. What the 49ers did over draft weekend was impressive. They drafted their replacement for DeForest Buckner and Javon Kinlaw, got their wide receiver at the top of the first in Brandon Ayuk, addressing two big areas of need. But then Joe Staley, their Pro Bowl left tackle, decided to retire on Saturday, and somehow John Lynch finally got the Washington Potatoes to deal their Pro Bowl left tackle, Trent Williams, for a fifth round pick this year and a third rounder next year. The Redskins pick tackle Shadiq Charles, Trent Williams' replacement, a good 30 seconds after the Trent Williams trade was announced. So they did not waste any time. Trent Williams played with Kyle Shanahan in Washington, so that's a great fit. And the fact that John Lynch gave up so little when everyone was reporting the potatoes wouldn't take anything less than a first rounder for Trent Williams is some pretty savvy GMing. The 49ers have plenty of riches at running back, which is why they then dealt running back Matt Breda to the Dolphins for a fifth rounder, which they used on tackle Colton McKivitz. Dolphins fans, you should be rock hard for Hard Rock Stadium games moving forward. Having Matt Breida and Jordan Howard together is a decent running back tandem. You got Tua, which will be like having Deshaun Watson in a couple years, good health pending. One of the best tackles in the draft in Austin Jackson, even though many will call it a reach. And then nine solid picks with my favorite being Solomon Kindly, the meanest son of a bitch you ever met. The reason I think the Dolphins did well is Tua, Plus, low expectations for the Dolphins. Low expectations is the key ingredient for success after the draft. Jacob Eason, Sex House Episode 1, Draft Day aired, and was finally taken by the Colts. And I admittedly know very little about Eason, except two people at his home had sex and then walked out of the bedroom, dressing themselves and fixing their hair. Big question here, was this a threesome? 
And will Philip Rivers mentor Eason, knowing Eason may have had sex and not made a kid? We have nine months to know the truth. Colts get an S for sexy draft. Jerry Jones, with the power of the sea and the help of Aquaman, had a hell of a draft from his $250 million yatch. Jerry deserved to be rewarded for a great draft with a celebratory gangbang. And boy, was he. Now, Jones helped Mike McCarthy have his best draft in years, which again has to make Aaron Rodgers, who wanted McCarthy ousted, feel like Jerry Jones' insides after that gangbang. The Cowboys, after paying Amari Cooper $100 million in free agency, took CeeDee Lamb. Lamb, Cooper, and Michael Gallup, that's the type of receiving trio that should piss off Giants, Eagles, and Potatoes fans. But the Cowboys also got great value in the draft. If Jerry Jones would have just started drafting from a boat years ago, Dallas could have won a Super Bowl with Tony Romo. Now, I'm not ruling out that this was a Creed Thoughts type situation where Jerry Jones was making his picks on a Fisher Price telephone while Stephen Jones did the real drafting. Ha ha, Jerry Jones here from Dallas Cowboys. I just want to phone in. I'm selecting Johnny Menzel with the first round draft and the 2020 draft pick. Oh, Jerry. Hello, Jerry again. Uh, give me the Cowgoes moo <laughs> as I draft from the moon. Jerry Jones. No, thank you, Commissioner Roselle. Jerry Jones. Can you hear me? Yes, Jerry again. I think I've been captured being held hostage on some sort of boat. Yeah, think about some unsavory things about to happen. I need rescuing. Jerry Jones, come get me. Jerry Jones, everybody. And finally, Jameis Winston has signed with the New Orleans Saints. Probably because he has literally completed more passes to Saints players than Taysom Hill. Now, Taysom Hill also has been extended through 2021 in New Orleans and now makes more money than Patrick Mahomes. But let's be honest, Mahomes only plays one position far less valuable than being a quarterback slash running back slash receiver slash special teamer. And if you remember, the Saints are currently embroiled in some major controversy, nearly erased by the coronavirus. Their owner and PR team helped the archdiocese in New Orleans do damage control for their disgusting priest pedophiles. I did a video about this a while ago, but knowing how well equipped the Saints are to deal with rapists, I think that makes them the best fit for Jameis Winston in the NFL. Outside of maybe the Steelers. The Saints only had four draft picks, making them the easiest team to draft evaluate. Thank you, Nola, and for that alone, you're the only team I actually give an A. Thanks for watching another episode of That's Good Sports. Draft blah blah. Draft blah 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 blah. Yeah. Did that help anybody subscribe? Were you on the fence about subscribing? And then I did draft blah blah blah. And you decided, you know, that's the channel for me.